Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head down to Huddersfield in Yorkshire once again and this is of course home to Magic Rock Brewing. So we're going to have a look at one of the Cannonball beers. This of course is the 2018 release if you're watching in the future but from what I understand this one is actually a new one. So we're going to have a taste of the Neo-Human Cannonball first. Of course the other two are the Human Cannonball and the Unhuman Cannonball but this guy is a New England style IPA and Imperial IPA coming in, I believe, at was at 9.2%. So yeah, should be a really interesting beer this one, definitely looking forward to it, it's my first time trying any of the Cannonball beers and uh, hopefully it's a good one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery, if you want to get straight to the tasting of course, just fast forward, all the usual links are in the description below, that's the brewery website linked to my other reviews that I've done from Magic Rock before, no doubt there will be some more in the near future, there's all the usual social media, if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. Channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the English beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos, and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, on to my brewery notes then. So as I've told you before, Magic Rock Brewing are based in Huddersfield in Yorkshire in England and they were established back in 2011 by brothers Richard and Johnny Burhouse, although Johnny later left the company, but they were joined in the early stages by head brewer Stuart Ross. But the beer brewing began in mid-2011 and the beers proved so popular that the brewery actually won the accolade of Best New Brewery of 2012 from Rate Beer. But the brewery was largely inspired by the big boom in craft beer over in America and they've been expanding their capacity and staff ever since, really simply due to the high demand for their beers. But as of 2015 they're based in the Willow Industrial, the Willow Business Park sorry in Berkby and they now employ well over 30 people and this site has a brewing capacity of 10,000 hectolitres per year and uh, they also have a fermentation capacity of around 70,000 hectolitres as well. Those numbers I will say are a little bit old, I'll need to check that out and see if they have upgraded their capacity since then. But um, as far as I know, they are, they're not too old. I think I found those numbers around 2017, so they maybe are um, still up to date. But yeah, really good brewery, these ones. If you are particularly interested in English craft beer, then Magic Rock are definitely one of the ones that, uh, that you want to check out. And these Cannonball releases that they do every year are always quite highly anticipated. I'm just glad that I was here uh, this year and able to actually get a hold of them. So yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now. You can check out the link in the brewery website in the description below and their Facebook page and stuff as well. Uh, those both links are both down there but let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself. So yeah, one thing I will commend Magic Rock on, I've complained about this in videos before, they've used a half litre can and there's so many breweries that are using these 440 milliliter ones which I believe are the equivalent of an American pint. Go and just use the European measurements and do a half litre like Magic Rock. You know, well done Magic Rock for that. But yeah, as you can see it's the typical kind of style of artwork on this one. I think I'm going to try and keep the label off this one. It's nice and sparkly actually. I don't know how well you can see it. Ah, there you are. Just checking the camera control. You can see that it's nice and sparkly there. As I said, um, I think this is actually a new release for 2018. Of course, there's been all this kind of um, craziness going on with the New England IPAs and stuff just now. There you can see it on the top corner there, the little kind of um, gate thing. That is the Magic Rock Brewery symbol. There you are, just let it focus. But um, the specs on this beer then, as I said, it's a 9.2% New England style IPA. The hops in this one, it's got Cryo Hops, Citra and CTZ, which is Centennial, Tomahawk and Zeus. Um, and it's also got a C uh, T90 Centennial Chinook and also some CTZ in there as well. It's got a WLP066 um, yeast in it, which is a London yeast if I'm remembering correctly. And the malt base in this one is Golden Promise, Torrified Wheat, Malted Wheat, Flaked Oats and Malted Oats as well. So yeah. Yeah, it should be a really interesting beer. This it's a black top on this one. So without further ado, then let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste. And this should be a really, really nice beer. So yeah. So as you can see, and as you would expect from the New England style IPA, it's pouring a really hazy, kind of yellowy and um, golden colour. We'll leave it at that for the moment. But yeah, as you can see, it's poured this really nice kind of bright yellow. Just, you know, these beers really just look like fruit juice, to be quite honest with you. There's a solid two-thirds finger of a frothy, I would say cream-coloured head on this one. Not a perfect white head. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass there, and quite a few little ones just heading up 
towards the bottom of the head but you know overall it looks really nice I've put my fingers behind the glass you can see it's not transparent at all it is pretty bloody opaque so um, yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma then and just see how we get on Ooh, that smells good it definitely smells nice so yeah definitely the citra hops are jumping out at you on this one the mangoes really are there Yeah, juicy mangoes, you can pick up the lychees and the gooseberries, there's maybe a little bit of the lemon lime coming out from them as well. I think underneath there's a little bit of grapefruit and you can definitely pick that up. That that's It comes a little bit from the citra but the chinook in this one will be kind of complementing that as well. And there's a little bit definitely of, of lemony citrus and that's the centennial but you can smell there's a good bit of piney resin that's the chinook the chinook is always you know it's a beast when it comes to giving you these big piney resinous qualities the centennial does give you a little bit of a slightly more spicy um, floral aromatisty with the CTZ, the Centennial Tomahawk and a uh, Zeus combination that they'll have in this. Um, from what I remember, Tomahawk and Zeus do give you quite a spicy and um, floral aromatisty as well, and you can definitely smell the sort of floral components of the hop, and uh, rather than the fruity side of things, that's really kind of coming out in this beer quite a bit. But overall, you know, the malt base when you let this beer settle, the malt base is starting to come out quite nicely as well. When you sugar it up, that's when you start to get more of these floral components of the hops. But as my nose is kind of adjusting to it, I'm picking up more and more of the uh, of the malt base in this one. So definitely you can pick up the nice kind of wheaty qualities to it. There's a nice little bit of a creamy um, oaty quality as well, which is what you'd expect from the New England IPA. And there's a wee bit of a kind of biscuity sweetness, I think, coming out of it as well, which I think will be the golden promise. But yeah... It does smell really, really nice, this one. So, take, as I always say, take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. Because it's always half the experience when it comes to craft beer and uh, whiskey and sake and all of these sorts of things. But let's get stuck into this one then. So this one is the Neo Human Cannonball, the New England IPA version from the Cannonball release at Magic Rock Brewery in Huddersfield in Yorkshire from 2018. Let's get stuck into this one. Slanja, Skull. Yeah, you know, it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty bloody good beer. You can say that about it right away. I've always found, you know, the Magic Rock beers, they do have this kind of distinctive mouthfeel. The hops have always got a little bit of bite to them and then the malt base. I find the malt base with Magic Rock is just slightly sweeter and slightly smoother and it just kind of, I always find these Magic Rock beers, they give you a little bit of bite and then the malt base just kind of slides in. I always like that about the Magic Rock beers. But yeah, that is, that's a nice beer. I mean, if you get the chance to try this, have a go at it. I'll tell you straight away, it is really quite well done. Yeah. I just like, I like how it comes across. These, the Magic Rock beers, when it comes to the IPAs, I've been saying recently, you know, there's so many of these these IPAs out there, and after a while, you know, it does start to get quite samey, but the Magic Rock ones, they've got that, for me, the Magic Rock beers, they hit the kind of mouthfeel that I like, it's got that juicy, fruity character, but then the malt base does have a little bit of sweetness, you know, the New England IPAs, a lot of the time, I find the malt base is just quite smooth, and I always find that, you know, the beers that have, that, that don't have a little bit of sweetness in the malt base, I, I have to admit, I do find them just a little bit boring. I love the West Coast IPAs with the caramel malt base and then when you get a little bit of a an oaty biscuit sweetness out of the New England IPAs I think that gives them just that little edge but that's just me as I always say everyone has their own palate and everyone um, you know be, the taste of beer is subjective basically mm. but yeah with this one as I was saying the hops give you a bit of bite at the start, when your mouth adjusts to it, that becomes a little bit more juicy. But at the middle of your palate, you can feel it's just blanketed by that nice kind of wheaty and um, white bread quality in the middle of the palate. And if, if actually, as you move a little bit further out towards the sides, there is a little bit of that almost biscuity sweetness. I reckon, as I say, that's the golden promise. But right in the middle of your palate, you can detect the creamy characteristics from the um, you can detect the creamy characteristics from the oats in this one.
but it's nice this beer. I like that malt base is 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 pretty good. I have to admit I like how it comes across in this one. And it just I'm finding that it's building in sweetness as you go on with this beer. On the hoppy side of things then, back corners of the palate there's a teeny bit of earthiness there. But interestingly I'm finding the pine resins are coming out towards the back of the palate as well. But then as you come further forward along the sides of your palate, it does it's a little bit more floral and spicy in that regard. And then round the very front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and grassy, I would say. Yeah, I would stick with that. As I say, the pine raisins are a little bit towards the back of the tongue, more floral and spicy on the front corners, and then lighter and grassy around the front curve of the palate. And of course, just behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get that little oily bubble where those nice fruity, juicy esters start to come out of the beer. So for me with this one, there's a little touch of grapefruit just underpinning this, but it's definitely leaning towards the mangoes that are coming out of the... Um, of the citra hop in this one. There's a good bit of a lemony citrus in there as well. The lemon, I think, is coming out as you go further into the aftertaste. You can feel that um, that nice kind of lemony note to the beer. And then as you move further and further into the aftertaste beyond that, you do get a little bit of the lychee and, you know, the gooseberry kind of notes that you would expect from the citrus. Mainly lychee. There's not so much in the way of a gooseberry there. But I think the lemony characters from, uh, from the centennial are coming out quite nicely in this beer as well. But I have to admit, it's one thing I've always liked about these Magic Rock beers, is the balance, is, is how they get the, the juiciness out of their beers. The malt base just has a little bit of sweetness and it kind of, I think when you've got a slightly sweeter malt base, it kind of separates the, the fruity qualities a little bit better from the malt base. Because um, the malt base, if it's just a smooth malt base, the fruity character can kind of, I think, kind of blend in with it a little bit. But if you've got a little bit of biscuity sweetness in there and the juiciness, I think it just separates the flavours a little bit better for the palate. Maybe that's why I like these uh, these Magic Rock beers as much as I do. But um, yeah, it's a really nice it's a really nice beer. This one, um, if you like the Citra Hop, you're certainly going to enjoy this one. If you like if you like mango flavours, this is a beer for you. If you like a little bit of lemony citrus in there as well, you're going to enjoy this. And I mean, the other big feature of this one, I think, is the the kind of the way that the floral bitterness and the the kind of piney bitterness interact in this. And there's a good little bit of a of a nice slightly sweet caramel in there as well. But overall, you know, it's a really nice beer. And you wouldn't expect anything less from Magic Rock, to be quite honest, you know, let's just say that. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I would say mid-bodied, definitely a mid-bodied beer. You know, the carbonation is quite smooth. This beer has a good balance in terms of its mouthfeel between oily and, uh, and smooth, I would say. There's a good little bit of hoppy bitterness to this beer, although that said... It's not going to blow your head off in terms of IBUs. I don't think it actually says on the can what the level of IBUs is, but I would guess it's somewhere between 50 and 60. Um, the I would say, yeah, there's a, the malt base is well balanced as well. There's a little bit of sweetness in there. It's a little bit sweeter than some of the New England IPAs you're going to come across. Good bit of hoppy bitterness, but a lot of juicy fruit to this one. And I have to admit, I really do like how this beer, just everything goes together in this beer uh, really nicely. So I'm really interested to try the human cannonball now. And just see how, um, and just see how the West Coast uh, equivalent of this beer goes across. But the Neo one, I think this is the new one, and I have to say they've done a pretty good job of it. So well done to Magic Rock for that. I wouldn't have expected anything less, but it's a great beer, and if you get the chance to try it, definitely have a go at this one. So yeah, the Neo Human Cannonball from Magic Rock Brewing in Huddersfield in Yorkshire. A really, really nice New England IPA. 9.1%. You are starting to push the boundary of what you can do with a New England IPA, in my opinion. You do get a little bit of boozy warmth out of this beer. I always find that sort of 8, 8.5% is the max you can get out of the New England IPA. And you do, at 9.2% with this one, you do get a little bit of booziness out of it. But it's a really nice beer. And you know, that's me absolutely nitpicking when I say that. But a lovely beer. Have a go at it if you get the chance, but we'll leave it at that for just now. So once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next thing, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Magic Rock Brewing as well. And I'm sure we'll return to these guys in the fairly near future. You will see a review coming up of the Human Cannibal and the Unhuman Cannibal over the next couple of weeks. But until the next time, stand you just now, and I will catch you guys very soon. Skull.